Hey everyone, welcome to uh, RPG Reviews. I'm here with Stephen and James uh, from Giant Lands and from a bunch of other stuff as well. And you uh, probably, um, there's probably no introduction needed for James. Um, and Stephen, I've been following your kind of career, just kind of doing a little backtrack on that too. You've got a great storied career in, uh, in game development. That's pretty awesome. Um, so um, for people that maybe not know you, maybe just a little background, a little bit of history on you would be really cool. Yeah, well, I mean, that's how I uh, came back to James because as a kid, you know, um, that's how I learned to design games. You know, I would uh, run games for my friends. And although I love D&D um, and the, the supplements, particularly that James made, Gamma World was really my jazz. Uh, and, uh, as I came back to this form, I wanted to try to find, uh, the people that had made it. And, um, you know, I made the mistake earlier on in life. I actually started my game career or my career as a game designer, I should say, uh, in Lake Geneva. And one of my clients was there. Um, but it never occurred to me, uh, to look, uh, for people like James that had created this form. Yes. So I found myself uh, at this park um, that I was a game director at called Evermore, yep. which was sort of like a living Dungeons and Dragons world that we'd invite people in for about $35 a ticket. And uh, it occurred to me that I should find James. And, um, you know, it's, it's one of these things that, serendipity destiny whatever you want to call it uh one day i was futzing around in the gamma world group on facebook and i realized i was talking to this gentleman named kim east uh, uh i'm sorry I'm kim name. eastland yeah yeah kim, kimber eastland and uh, i was about to call him eastman i was thinking of eastman and lard so and um kim was amazing and he was generating all this amazing content you know and i didn't realize how close i was really to this whole community and um, I said, hey, work with me to make this game, sort of like Gamma, um, but we're going to make it into a park and invite people to come play there. And the cool thing is, uh, rather than sort of trying to recreate D&D &D in a park setting, we'll have an original game that we can run there. And uh, Kim said, well, I'll only work with you uh, if you can get two things. One, James Ward. Uh, and two, Gamma World. And I was like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it's occurred to me very quickly, though, that, you know, as you sort of said, uh, I guess it was sort of off air, if you will, uh, prior to recording, you know, I sort of thought a lot of this had gone away myself. I mean, 10 years ago, uh, when I was a professor of game design, I'd get these students that would come to me wanting to make create the next, you know, Elder Scrolls or whatever, um, you know, a big RPG in, in the context of a video game. Uh, yeah. But many of them had never uh, it made an encounter in Dungeons and Dragons, let alone seen a red box. Mm -hmm. So uh, I spent much of the first semester of this four year program, uh, just getting them to learn to run D&D. &D. Uh, and I sort of thought it had disappeared, but sure enough, Kim gives me this challenge and I realized that uh, actually it's the biggest bread earner for Hasbro these days um, is Dungeons and Dragons. And it's generating billions of dollars of revenue a year. Uh, and that's when it occurred to me that I might not be able to get Gamma World. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah. So, I said, so I said, hey, there's this thing about giants. You know, I kind of put it down. I was working on it a while ago. Maybe we could use it and set it, set it in a future scenario and treat it sort of like our gamma. Uh, and I pitched it to Jim and he seemed sort of into it. And uh, that's why it got Kim to, to agree to, to move forward with us. That's so cool. That's, and that was kind of where I wanted to kind of kick this off to you kind of answered my original question. One of my original questions is that, you know, what is the origin uh, and how, why this, why now? So maybe just a little bit more expanding upon, you know, like why now, why are, why have we waited well, so long for Gamma World uh, version 2.0 or whatever? You know, it's it's really not that. You know, if you go through the books, it really isn't. You know, it, there's there's elements of that. I feel like I feel like it's an old school game, 
uh, which is really cool, right? That's that's what's drawing me in. I think that's what's drawn in a lot of the people that have, have pre-ordered and that continue to order. It's like, well, uh, uh, Jim's on board. You know, we've got Gamma World, the guy who created Gamma World that was so important to us when we were kids. You know, we everyone was playing D&D and then we're like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we had laser pistols too? Like, and everyone was homebrewing <laughs> it, right? Jim, everyone was homebrewing it. Let's come, let's be honest. Everyone was homebrewing, you know, but what our homebrew, I'll be honest with you, it wasn't 1D6 uh, for a, a laser attack. It was like uh, 1D100, you know, <laughs> so it's like 100 points of damage. But then when you came out with the rules for that, we were like, oh, thank God. All right. But so why now? Why giant lands now? Why why did you guys decide? Well, Stephen, you start, and then I'll I'll dr- come in and end. Yeah, you know, I, I feel bad uh, stepping on uh, Jim because it's really no, Jim's legacy. So that's a big part of it. Is really Jim's legacy. I'm a big fan of James Ward, and you know everything he's ever created, and um, it it's really made me as a human being, and I like to think it's made my life more rich and you know special. I don't know. And Blushing so I love share- furiously over I here. Love, I love sharing it with people, and. Um, yeah, when the opportunity came along, uh, I thought that uh, it would be, in some ways, um, my own sort of restitution for everything I received uh, as a kid and that I still receive from uh, everything that uh, James uh, and his co-workers and friends uh, from uh, Lake Geneva built. And, and so this was a, a way to kind of... Uh, hope to elevate them again because I thought it was really interesting looking at um, the marketing for Dungeons and Dragons particularly in recent years and you could we could speak the same with uh, I'm sorry with Gamma World but I thought it was very strange that they no longer associated them with the creators of games and I thought hmm that's pretty that's a little peculiar why would they do that um, here we have these people still around that made these games like you know, yeah, they, and and they made them at a time when when this was very very new, right? Um, they really um, started a, a revolution uh, in games that's now spread the world over. And I don't think I'd work in video games, frankly, without the RPG. Certainly not without war games. Yeah. Um, and so it was sort of for me, kind of coming full circle back to this form I loved so much. And I thought, wouldn't it be a great opportunity to also give these people a platform um, by which um, they could share their gifts to the world? Uh, because they're still here. I mean, Jim Jim's oh, hasn't stopped working. Jim's still making games, and yeah. um, we, you know, and I, I just I think they deserve know. to be champions for it. We yeah, exactly. We, we know. <laughs> we know. We know. We're here. We know that. Okay. Okay. So so there I am sitting in my house and. And I, I always have two or three projects going at once. And I get a lot of people writing to me saying, hey, we got the next great role-playing idea. Why don't you do it? And we'll pay you after you're done, after we've made $10 million. Yeah. <laughs> and so I get those offers all the time. <laughs> or this will really help your resume. <laughs> that's, that's a good one that I get. But um, Kim Eastland gives me a call and says, you know, I got this Stefan guy. And he's got an interesting idea, Jim. You should check it out. <clears throat> and so we, we start talking, and he hooks me hook, line, and sinker with his idea. Jim, we're going to make a role-playing game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard that before. We're going to make it into a theme park. Oh, my God. Into a theme park? What a great idea. So you play the game in your dad's basement with your friends, and then you take those characters that you've developed and you walk into the theme park and you play those same characters. I think that is gigantic, gigantically exciting. I have to tell you. Yeah. And so we, we started working on it and Stefan had some great ideas already done and, and fleshed out. And so we just turned it into a fun role-playing game. And it's it's, and I'm really kind of surprised at all the positive reviews. Usually, we have a bunch of naysayers, like the 5E players from yeah. AD&D, who hate everything but 5E, <laughs> who say, no, this is awful. But we've actually had quite a few um, YouTube people get on, just like you. Your presentation on YouTube was just excellent. Thank you. 
uh, on the game, except for you not liking the monsters, of course. You I, know, I figure it's I it's to. not going to be perfect, you know, and we um, really tried to do an homage to early TSR products. Yes. So, yeah. and, and, and also we're not a, you know, a big company. So part of the fun, I think here is getting involved in something that is small, uh, that is craft and, you know, Will we recreate the RPGA? I know some people have already worked on that. No, but you know we're inviting people to help us make this game better and to refine us, refine it with us because that's that's sort of the way that these games worked in the past. You know, here we can sort of truncate it. We got a lot more visibility than say D and D did in 1974 because you know you said, I mean back then that the term role playing game didn't exist. Yeah, hey, you know I want to touch on something that James said. Um, you know he was hooked because it's gonna. You're talking about theme park. I'll be honest with you. When I heard that, I was like, I, I doubt that. But then, <laughs> I, I doubt that. So, no, look, look at it. But then I looked up your background and I'm in the tech industry myself. So, you know, uh, AR, VR background. Then I, I thought, oh, geez. Okay. So now he's got someone on board that I can actually take that idea and actually make it happen and works with uh, you know gaming companies and, and that sort of thing so now that's a little bit more exciting and the way the tech is going the you know ar and vr is going it's really it's a, it's we're getting closer to that uh live action um role playing you know it's, it's, yeah, it yeah. sounds pretty it sounds pretty kooky to uh, to people and you know and i tell people i usually get you know one of a few different responses when i tell people i make theme parks or i'm working on a theme park um, but this is something I've done, I guess, really for only about five or six years now. Um, but, you know, my I had a park open last year in Osaka, uh, or should I say a land, uh, Super Nintendo World um, at Universal Studios Japan. Um, it's also coming uh, to the U.S. Uh, in two locations. I believe one should open in 2025 at the latest at Universal's uh, Epic Universe, which is their third major park. Uh, that they're putting in in Orlando. Yeah, so my last one, I mean, that was my last project, really. I've had, you know, more games released last year, but I had worked on in the past, even uh, with uh, Super Nintendo World. The last time I worked on that was in 2018. But over the course of 2018, I uh, worked, worked to develop Evermore Park and uh, could see, uh, you know, as a kid, we would do this just sort of naturally. We'd go and get the cardboard and the markers and the tin foil, and we'd chase each other around the backyard with broomsticks, yeah. you know, pretending we were inside of ElfQuest or D and D or Gamma World or you know whatever it was, and it didn't wasn't a big stretch of the imagination. Um, so it seems only natural to me that I would sort of marry those things together. And yeah, the theme uh, the theme park part of it sort of almost became back burner because. Uh, or should I say shelved a bit because we, this TTRPG became so serious yeah. and we focused so much on delivering a real product that you can play at the table and that, that works as, as a standalone and traditional RPG. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's a good idea. I think, I think what made me a little bit nervous, I'm just, I don't know if I'm mimicking some of the other people that are online or that have bought one E, but <clears throat> we're hoping that you will focus uh, on this product. It's, I've been through the whole thing. I've read the books three, four times now. It's good. It's, it borders on great. Um, it's, it, I think that there's, 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 there's ways that, you know, I would have liked to see a little bit um, cause I'm spoiled now, James. And I'm, I'm not, it's not a critique. I'm just spoiled now. I'm a spoiled kid now because I'm used to people <laughs> spoon feeding me everything. And so when I got through it, I was like, Oh yeah, this is good, man. There's kind of all over the place. I was a little, I was a little disappointed. There wasn't more tables like in, you know, original D and D and there wasn't like, you know, there was, you know, like I got to, it's almost like gatekeeping, you know, it's like, I hate to say these words that I'm not, I'm an old school gamer. I hate to say like gatekeeping and stuff like that, but you know, it's like you had to, you had to be pretty good at math to play the original uh, D and D and, you know, you had to remember charts and you had to be pretty intellectual uh, to do it. And I wasn't great at it, but I had friends that were good at it and they coached me along when I was a kid. So um, so I, I do love it. And I kind of want to understand, like, I want to shift. Thank you very much for that uh, background too, uh, Stefan. It's appreciated. And I just want to shift to what is, what is your short-term goals for, for um, you know, 
and and I want to talk a little bit about you know is are you evolving the game at all in the in the short term? Are you going to wait? You know, what's the R and D that you're doing on that? And then what's the midterm goals for? We won't talk about long term goals. That's that's out there. That's that's the park. Okay, we'll get to the park. But what's your short term goals for for the game now that's released? James, can you you want to kind of talk on that? Uh, I want Stefan. Stefan is the or captain Stephen? of our ship. Okay. So I'll have him start, and then I'll I'll lob in again. Go I, ahead. I have to admit, I've gotten used to Jim calling me the boss, but it's a little weird. <laughs> <That's> uh, <laughs> so yeah, I learned uh, from Miyamoto and working with Nintendo not to talk about anything, quite frankly. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and although I'm happy to share some stuff with you now, um, you know, intentionally we don't talk about a lot. Um, because uh, it, we lose some um, competitive advantage uh, once we start to disclose things. Also, um, it tends to create um, things in the consumer's mind, which may or may not exist, which seem sort of promise or, or promissory, right? Okay. Um, so yes, uh, this year uh, we are planning a lot of Giant Lands releases. I'll say that we're planning releases quarterly um you know we've already had i mean just today actually although it's not a major release or anything uh we had um that first of the giant lands albums is now available uh for download on Bandcamp. and if you go look on social i've been giving away some of those codes so people can download it for free it'll also be available on streaming services it's a multi-hour sort of ambient um album that's intended for use while you're playing the game so the tracks are actually labeled for different terrain types um, that you'll encounter as, as you're moving through the map. Um, and so as we're also working on this game, because I mean, really what we're trying to do is emulate a, an early TSR product in that process, again, however truncated, I don't want to wait, you know, 10 years uh, to come out with the advanced edition. And it sort of comes back to what you were saying about the tables and stuff too. I mean. I have these original tables from Kim who passed away about two years ago, um, sadly, but you know, he, he was a great advisor and he did a lot of great work that still inspires me. So I was looking at some of Kim's tables. I'm like, man, we need more tables. And Jim, <laughs> and Jim, Jim, Jim says, no, 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 buddy. No, no, just wait, just, just wait, put that in the advance. Just wait. That's so right. Many, that, so I many keep things. That over and over again. <laughs> he wants, he is a very creative mind, our Stefan. And he wants, he wants it all instantly. And I just keep telling him, you know, we have to have advanced rules. We have to have something in the advanced rules. You have to have a roadmap. You got to have a roadmap. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I totally get, totally get that. And he kept saying, promise me you'll stop. Promise me you'll stop. Well, I, I kind of can promise. I'm not sure if I could promise that. I don't he, know. He <laughs> never stopped. He never stopped. I would get done with the rules, and he'd add three major concepts into the rules. It was crazed. It was crazed. No, that, yeah. that that's great. Then that's that creative process, and that's what I think I'm holding here in my hand right now is the is the culmination of that creative process that you guys had, and sort of it, it does. It feels to me like this is you know this new but old. A feeling you know and that and i Perfect. and i like that I that like was that. good that was done on purpose by the way yeah and you can just tell i mean you know the cover art it, you know some of the it's just just fantastic you it know it's good this map that that we have in the box right <clears throat> hex map you know we call it hex crawl like from years ago right so uh -huh. these it's, it fantastic. is an amazing map too it's it, it's very gamma worldy stuff and stuff and that's all stuff and he did a great design on that yeah and, and everyone keeps saying it looks like gamma. well obviously it looks like gamma that's what i wanted it to look like yeah, you know? exactly. I, I looked at G all of jim's maps and i said well how do i take that and try to make it look like this is part of that legacy he, he's and taking I'm, a ton I'm upset of, about this i'm upset about yeah, this yeah that's right he's taking a ton of heat because that glorious poster is on the back of the map I'm like what am i supposed to do it i need a two-sided frame uh, what's wrong with you guys come on yeah man. really exactly well you know i was looking at empire of the pedal throne and i sort of wanted to put some city maps on the back of it but it just wasn't inside the scope so that's when i said no we'll do that later i'll give people this awesome piece of artwork for people that don't want to do the whole hex crawl bit um and they can hang that in their their window and 
that's you know, really dating know. that really dating Stefan on how old he is. <laughs> that, that he has a copy of Empire of the Pedal Throne and he knows what's in it. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about old school. Oh my goodness. So yeah, I, it's 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 research, you know. I mean, I uh I don't know. I wasn't around uh when the D D first came out, you know, when I first uh, came into these products. It was via my older brother, and he's about 10 years older than me, and they were playing in the early 80s. I love the cartoon, um, but uh, that's really where I started getting into these products. And yeah, they've changed a lot, right, Over since the 90s. They've become something different. Even now, I, I look at the advanced D&D second edition books, and for some reason, I don't know, they don't feel the same to me as I, I used to feel about them. I like that earlier stuff. And the the, the the rawness to it and it seems more authentic to me um and, there we and go maybe that, maybe that's, that's that's part of what's coming through that's um, true of most people too mm -hmm. it, you know it's it's called the old guard it's people who really enjoyed first and second edition and the D, D brown box set you know and, and they're a big market out there and, and that's exactly what i write to all the time when i design games is i write to that that large market of people who have some cash and who are interested in the game but um we we also looked at those 5e kids and and we designed some elements in the game to appeal to the younger crowd in giant lands if you wear a mask or you wear a costume while you play the game you have a huge game advantage yeah you, you get you get additional percentages on your dice rolls uh oh, what am I seeing here? No, no, no. I'm just bringing up my book. I have my all my no, notes but, that I. Oh, okay, I, yeah. I, I think he just upgraded his Zoom or something. Oh, okay. So anyway, you 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 get a big advantage if you wear costumes, and that's what our cosplay kids just love. They love getting that stuff on and wearing it at conventions and things. And that's and now, this... it's a game element. It's gonna it's you're gonna be able to play better. And that's really what it's about too, is trying to get the, for the people that are into it or the people that could be into it to get them up away from the table and, you know, battling with sabers, you know, inside of a theme space, which is what the park will be. You know, I like to think it'll be a Mecca where you can go and sit around at tables and move miniatures and not have to get dressed up or do any of that stuff. But there will be people that want to go get dressed oh, yeah, up and that's sure. why they show up. And they'll yeah. be a great fun to watch, right? Have you ever been to a Renaissance festival? I mean, like yeah. we have a massive one here in Kansas. I get dressed up, like we go out to the Renaissance Festival. That's actually the one of the best in the nation. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah, I bet I used to live down there. And and I'll tell you right now, I, I think that that's a good idea. I think you got it, I think you got a winning winning combination. I want to kind of bring us back just, you know, um, and not spend too much time, but I want to talk a little bit about the game and the game mechanics it, itself. So how did you, wh why, why this um, percentile based game? Why did you okay. That? That's a great question. And, and you have to have a point of difference. All right. Okay. I, I learned that when I, in my 20 years at TSR, different. you want to be different from the competition. Okay. And so the competition you get, you get multi-sided dice, you know, you get a 20-sider, 12-sider, a 4-sider. So I said to myself, how can we be different from the competition and easier to play? Because the easier you make the game, the more people will, will get into it and play it. And so I, I came up with this percentile system for everything, mm -hmm. um, from, from the to hitting and combat to, to the making of monsters to your character creation. You use percentile dice. It's nice and easy. You don't you don't have to buy a million different dice, and uh, and I think it really works well. And and I, again, I was trying for simplicity, because uh, I, I tell you that's the one thing that Five E does the best of all of the AD and Ds. Their game is easy to understand now. They have quantified it down to its lowest elements. So they, their version is really easy to understand. I, I don't like their version, but their version is easy to understand. And that's what I was trying for, something that was easy to understand where, where you did something different than what everybody else is doing. And so that's where the percentages came in. Right, and, yeah, and you know, Jim, you know, and Jim is a master of this stuff. He knows this stuff inside and out. He not only is aware of, you know, the market, but he's actually made the thing. So, yeah, he was the one that drove it, and he wanted to make it a unique product that built on his legacy um, that, while it does give that sort of nostalgia, also has a new edge to it. 
No, I love, and, and it's not just percentile. So initially when I came into this, I'll, I'll tell you my first initial thought. So percentile dice game, pretty awesome. I love it. Everyone loves to roll in percentile. I, I you know, on those old charts back in uh, AD and D, <laughs> rolling percentile, man, especially on the treasure table, forget it, forget it, man. You know, it was fantastic. That's why there's so many tables in AD and D. Because you could roll yeah, really. on them. Isn't you know, that the truth? Yeah. A hundred of them. <laughs> so, just, just a few too many, I think. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm harping on that. But anyway, that's okay. right. Okay, so so roll the percentile is cool. So I initially, you know, because I play 5e too, I'm thinking, all right, so I'm gonna have an armor class of like 50, you know, and I'm gonna have to roll 60 to, to hit that armor class. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, and then it's it's more the 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 rules and the mechanics. James, you did it a little differently, didn't you? Right. So I mean, there's there's the there you go you go to hit someone, you got to roll a certain percentage, and then you got sort of like a savings throw where you got to roll under your armor class. Am yes. I getting that rule mechanic right? No, that's that's exactly right. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. It, again, you know, I'm just I'm just looking for something that's simple, but I you know. Uh, people do love rolling percentile dice, and and you know even the biggest number to the littlest number, they all have value. They all have you, purpose. You solved in one mechanic uh, hit points because the biggest yeah. thing with hit points is like, okay, is it my health points or is it my armor that's protecting me? And then you're kind of like, no, you get you get a savings throw for your armor, and then that'll tell you, you know. So you, you there's a big. I think that there's a really good underlying and people haven't tried it um i think you need to try it and i'm not i'm gushing a little bit over that because i thought man that was unique that's cool that is really cool that my armor gets a, a saving so sort of thing well plus I, plus know. all your weapons their weapons aren't random damage they no, all have not. specific numbers and i did that on purpose because first of all it's easier and quicker because you know what no one wants to spend two hours fighting a single orc no one wants to do that and and with the damage you got a, you got the long sword it does a certain amount of damage and it, that makes it easier you're not rolling you know what you can do and can't do it, it again it, it's simpler and easier and yeah and again, I, I think it works well you, you you sped up combat i know it's i know you guys keep saying in the manual it's not a combat focused rpg you know there's a lot more in, uh, into it I'm an old school guy, man. I kick doors down and I just hope there's not a, a trapper above and a lurker below and a big dragon in there. So, you know, I'm there we like, go. There we go. I hear you. Too. You know what I'm saying? Now, right? admit, admittedly, admittedly, that push has a lot to do with the part. Okay. Um, at, at the table, I totally expect people to be kicking butt, quite frankly. <laughs> yeah. uh, but when you're in a park, that becomes a little more challenging and you can't necessarily have people duking it out with each other all the time. So you have to have some more cooperative means uh, for people to accomplish tasks. Absolutely makes sense. Let's let's talk about the other um, a big combat thing because again, this is going to be a little bit of combat. So lay energy. Talk to yeah. me a little bit about that. I mean, I I got it. You know, I've read through it a couple of times, but I kind of it's interesting. You know, ley lines. I think as a kid, somewhere in my head, I heard about ley lines on the earth, and I don't know where I heard it from. But then it came up, and I was, it was like lay energy. I'm like. Sounds familiar, but I don't know. Okay, so we kept writing through it. Then finally, yeah, sure. explained the lay, lay lines. I think it was in one of your videos, to be honest with you, uh, that I finally put two and two together. But mm -hmm. explain that. Explain how it's magic, right? It's the magic system. Oh, it, it's exactly right. First of all, ley lines are real. It's it's a yeah. force that, that surrounds the earth, and there's different strengths of ley lines that then they cross each other all over the earth. Yeah, so it's it's very interesting and it's real it's a real thing that you can read about and learn about and people can douse ley lines and stonehenge and other things are based on ley lines and so now i need a magic system what am i going to do and and we have we have this this apocalyptic earth but also kind of a fantasy element to it which our game of course is the first apocalyptic fantasy role-playing game so i think that's really neat that and of course the ley line ley energy is the magic of the system and and stuff in there had these way cool coins that he was developing that that were going to turn and he's pulling out a coin okay good and uh he has these way cool coins and so all the intelligent races of the world have been given these coins by gaia the goddess of earth 
And and so one of the objects of the game, one of the fun objects is you want to collect every single kind of coin. And when you do that, Gaia gives you a wish. So I just think that's a, it's a real nice agenda quest that everybody's going to do because they want to collect these coins. And, yeah. and of course, the coins are all associated with powers. Every morning at dawn, you pick a power from your coin, your Gaia coin, and, and you can have that power all day long. And so who doesn't like superpowers? <laughs> you know, every, Marvel, of course, has introduced all these superheroes and they all have these powers. Well, you have a power. And, and actually, when you start collecting coins, you have multiple superpowers. So I think that's going to really appeal to a lot of people um, who, who aren't used to that kind of thing. Yeah, I looked at a lot of different systems to try to expand on it because it really did come from Jim. I mean, he... When he first said lay to me, I was like, ah, ah. <laughs> Should we be using that in a game for kids? No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, um, but I came around on it, embraced it a lot, and, you know, um, looked at the I Ching and all kinds of crazy stuff I don't need to go into, and eventually reduced it down to these four different energies. Although there are more types of lay energy, but when I will, we'll, We'll get into that at a advanced time. rules. Advanced yeah, rules. Right, yeah, exactly. You, you exactly. can skip being set up in the rule as you guys wrote it. You can say, "Uh oh, there's going to be some more stuff coming." <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Everything's got to be improved on. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's not quite like an alignment system, but each different lay school has a different vibe to it, and as a result of you know focusing on those different energies, your characters will play differently. And I thought it'd be a nice way to encourage cooperation. Uh, to get people with uh, complementary forms of lay energy uh, to go out as an adventure party. Yeah, no, that's ah, good. Exactly. Everything to increase the role-playing aspect. You know, that's the, that's the fun part, the give and take of the game. So, and we hey, do a lot of that. So, so, so the, that's the, 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 the combat system and, and introducing some RP to that. Um, one of the things, though, that one of the critiques that I had, I think in my, my video, I was like, you know, one of the things, or at least I, I it was in my head. I don't know if I critiqued it too much on, on my first video, but I was thinking, you know, I, I, we do need a, we do need a little bit of handholding, right? It always helps. It's always like, you know how you have a quick starter guide in any kind of electronic that you buy. So I, that quick starter guide um, might be helpful. And, and the way that I think that I'm, I've seen you guys, what you're doing right now, and, and this is this is public knowledge, you're working on a module. Yeah, correct? the broken road, exactly right. And that's our quick start guide. It's going to help the game, the spirit keeper, yep. um, play the game and learn how to how to role play the game. Um, it's going to be a short adventure. Um, and uh, we're going to we're going to debut it at Gary Con in March cool. and uh, then have it available to people. It was one of the great elements from Jim's uh, design history that we didn't weren't able to incorporate is a lot of that storytelling that he would start to do in adventure model modules and later on in core books that really kind of helped step people into the game uh, through a story. So uh, yeah, that's that's what we're uh, focusing on with the Broken Road and you know I have put some additional materials out uh, to try to get help people into it, but it you know. I was another thing that I wanted to put in the box, quite frankly, and uh, decided that I should take a step back um, and release it at another time, possibly in a different way. No, no, for, no, for sure. Uh, that, and that makes complete sense. I mean, no one was hand holding you when you when we had the original box set of basic rules, right? So yeah, really. that's, that's, and that's a that's a big <laughs> thing right there. It's like it's like people can go play with Jim at Gary Con, right? Yeah, go, um, go and people Gary. at Gamehole Con they could have played yeah. with Jim previously. But and it's even right now, as much as I want to go out there and make videos that say, hey, here's how you play it, yeah, we didn't really have that in the past. And there's I think something yeah. really magical about the discovery of just playing it and playing it with your friends. And that's you know, it comes back to the whole guidelines bit, right? Mm. And we don't want to push it down your throat how you have to play this game. We want it to be an expression uh, of no. you having fun with your buddies, right? Yeah, and let, let, let your community uh, build content too and, and just leverage us. I think that that's good. I think especially for new game, not new to game designers, but a new company kind of, you know, just trying to get their feet uh, um, wet and, and, and do something really awesome. I think as you build up, I mean, 
the community will support you. I mean, you, you've done a good job, uh, uh, great Thank job you. initially. So we appreciate that. Except for the monsters, of course. Well, you know, I just <laughs> one of the funny things I just want to mention, just really quick here. Uh, so well, there you go, Jim. Jim says we should. You're giving James create. Sorry, I wasn't doing that to you. I wasn't doing that to you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Say yeah. what you're no, you, you, you I, I was go. just. I was saying like, um, <clears throat> you're giving James a lot of credit for creativity for a guy who um, his first character name was his name spelled backwards. Um, so I, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't know that, that wasn't name. that wasn't my first character name. Oh, sorry, your uh, Greyhawk, <laughs> your Greyhawk, your famous, your famous. Yeah, character. there we go. I, that that is a famous name for some bizarre reason in in Greyhawk lore. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, I wasn't shushing you on anything. Go ahead, go ahead, Stephen. Sorry. No, I, I don't even I don't even remember what I was gonna. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we're not making fun of James here. I thought we were all gonna yeah. pile on, but pile no. on me about my monsters. Yeah, I know. Yeah, great. Thanks. Oh, right. So, yeah. So here you awesome. go. This is something that I think we can talk about that I, I put a little poll on Twitter to get too many votes. What you going to do? Um, you know, what are we going to release first uh, in hardcover? And, uh, you know, my inclination was to uh, release uh, the Spirits Guide, you know, to really try to have a, you know, sort of, like you said, a quick start, you know, for people that don't have the full box set. Um, but our, our fans online and, and Mr. Ward uh, predicated it. Um, and said, hey, actually, we should release uh, the Fifth Age Index first. Uh, the you know, Monster our, our, Manual. Our yeah. Monster Manual. And, and, you know, again, an emulation of, uh, you know, what, what Gary did with D&D. &D. That was the first hardcover book. Yeah. Yes. So if you're going to see all those terrible monsters and listen, in hardcover and, soon. Can I, can I be, so can I be, no, it's great. They're, they are, you know, when you read through them, it's great. It's fantastic. I, I <laughs> yeah, listen to them backtracking I now. Am, yeah. But I would, you know, I would love to see you put a list of tribes. No, uh, that's, yeah. it's got to be, my, it's got to be more of an index, you know, is my an attitude. index. I want to see some, like, I, I mean, I don't want to make. You know how up. much work that is? You don't know how much work that I is. I don't, I that's don't. A, that's a lot of work. I'm just you a can't consumer, just, James. You I, can't I, just I, throw that together. Do you know how <laughs> consumers work? Do you not know how consumers yeah, work? I, we I ask do. for the world yeah. and we expect you to have it tomorrow. Yeah, that's no, why that's why Stephen and I don't talk about stuff because because <laughs> now somebody's gonna listen to this and say, oh, and they're coming out with a really good index on the tribes. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're and not. we should we should do a tribe because TSR did that kind of material. You know, they came they came out with a fighter's book and a wizard's yeah, book and yeah. an illusionist book, and that should be done. But right now we're 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 a garage business. And we're, and we're working out of a car, and, uh, and so we we we're, we're growing, but slowly growing. We aren't we aren't. Uh, I thought uh, that unless, would play well. I don't know. I'm not part of the secret cabal, so I don't know how uh, everyone. Yeah, felt really. About it. But I thought it was cool. It was like, hey, this is me in the back of my car. Hey, you're yeah. very TikTok. You're very TikTok. <laughs> I think you're, you're you're very TikTok on that one. So don't worry about it, mm. guys. You know, I I didn't want to make this too long. And I don't want to take too much of your time. It's been amazing chatting with you. I mean, you guys are super down to earth for um, uh, amazing creative people. For two, you know? for two young gods in the hobby industry. Yeah, so, I, no, I, no. I agree. <laughs> it is true. I mean, you guys are you guys are pretty uh, um, iconic. Uh, Just as long as you don't call me legendary, then it's fine. I said iconic. I said <laughs> okay, iconic. that's iconic. good. You're starting to. Go That'll yeah, work. I, I, I didn't expect any of that to be for the record. I didn't, you know, I mean, it's nice to, you know, catch a little of Jane's blow. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it, it's uh, we have a remarkable amount of visibility, which is an indie game is, is sort of fantastic. And, you know, I'm, I'm grateful to, to be here and doing the work. And, you know, what's really fun for us, uh, what's really fun for me, I think, I think Jim's uh, more used to having fans of his RPGs. I am not. Um, and it's great. <laughs> It's great I, to have people that, that are enjoying it so much. And I think that'll just keep growing. And uh, yeah. that's when I'll start getting teary-eyed. It's when yeah. I see Aww. lots of people playing and having fun. I, I warned him at the beginning of this process that when we came out with the game, we would get some naysayers that would really give us some nasty, nasty critiques even before they read the game but that that didn't pretty much happen so i was very happy and and stefan has come out with a brilliant looking product 
which is just so very important in the industry. You know, the competition, AD&D, looks gorgeous right now. And there's a lot of other really good-looking competition. You know, Larry is Elmore is a fantastic artist. We were very lucky to get him. I'm really blessed yeah. to work with Larry on it. Yeah. I know, I know. And this is hitting hard, you know. This is this is so Gamma World to me. Like, it's just... <laughs> It feels like colored Gamma World. Um, I think that's Gamma one of the reasons. Course. Trademark, sorry, trademark. Sorry. Yeah, Gamma World is a copyright of uh, Hasbro Incorporated and shall not be any part of our game. Not in the least. But I think that's one of the reasons that Larry worked with us, aside from uh, his connection to Jim and being Jim's longtime friend, is, you know, he thought, hey, this sounds different. And it doesn't sound like the regular stuff people are asking yeah, me to he do. He doesn't have to draw a dragon and a princess. In yeah, exactly. <laughs> in fact, he can get back to his little scantily, scantily clad women again. Oh, yeah, that all look like his wife, Betty. <laughs> what do you think? I, did, I had no idea. Yeah, his wife is, is gorgeous, a gorgeous lady, and, and pretty much all his women are her. Oh, okay, I, didn't, I did not know that, and I watched the. Uh, there's a special on right now on the artists in D and D universe. Mm, yeah, um, on Netflix, I think. Anyway, um, that was. It's been great talking to you guys, man. Let's. Well, let's thank you. Let's end it here because it's on a good note, and um, then we'll stick on a little bit afterwards, and I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll let you tell me how poor of an interviewer I am. Um, thanks, guys. <laughs> really appreciate you uh, being on the show, and uh, I think we'll do a part two. Um, so if everyone's interested in, in here in part two, leave a comment below and uh, we'll get it. We'll I'll try and beg these guys to get back on. So thanks again, everyone. And we'll uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, Mick.